When Prince Harry informed the king about his cancer diagnosis, he did not want to be in the same room as Queen Camilla, according to sources. The Duke of Sussex reportedly told his cancer-stricken father, King Charles IV, that he did not want to be in the same room as the Queen. After the monarch's unexpected cancer revelation last week, the father of two took a quick plane trip from California to London to spend 30 minutes with his father. It's no secret that Harry and Camilla don't get along, since the Duke stated in his memoir, Spare last January, that his stepmother was giving false information to the media about the royal family in order to improve her reputation. In addition, he called her a villain and dangerous, saying that she had sacrificed him in order to boost her stature. After a 10-hour flight from Los Angeles to the British capital on Tuesday, Prince Harry arrived at Clarence House at 2.42 p.m. After leaving the royal life, the Duke, who is no longer friendly with his father or brother Prince William, swiftly returned to Los Angeles. The next day, he was in Vegas for an NFL award ceremony. According to royal expert Robert Jobson, the king only spent 30 minutes with Harry during their meeting in order to reduce his stress levels. You don't want his blood pressure going up, he stated to the son. Whatever kind of cancer he has, the king is not doing well and is receiving treatment. Calm is the best thing for him. What concerns will be brought up after the initial I love you, dad, and I hope you get better soon, kiss and hug? Items that can raise your blood pressure. The Telegraph reported in November that Charles was disappointed with how his son portrayed Queen Camilla in his book Spare. I have complex feelings about gaining a step-parent who I thought had recently sacrificed me on her personal PR altar, Harry wrote of Camilla in his memoir. According to Harry, he and his brother Prince William had begged their father, King Charles IV, then Prince Charles, not to wed Camilla because they thought she would turn into their wicked stepmother. Harry delivered another blow when he called Camilla a villain and dangerous who left bodies in the street in an attempt to alter the public's opinion of her. Harry expanded on his assertions in a January TV interview with Anderson Cooper on the CBS News program 60 Minutes, which was intended to promote the book. She needed to repair her image because she was the third person in their My Parents' marriage, the Duke remarked. Because of the relationships she was building within the British press, which made her dangerous, there was open willingness on both sides to trade information, she said. And because her family was structured around hierarchy and she was destined to become queen consort, bodies or people would inevitably end up on the streets as a result. An aide revealed to the Sunday Times, three months after the book's release in April, Camilla's response to Harry's allegations was, it was much more of an eye-roll response. It was not stamping of feet or gnashing of teeth. The newspaper was also informed by Camilla's close friend Fiona Shelburne, Lady Lansdowne, that of course it hurts and bothers her. She doesn't let it bother her though. Less said, more quickly mended is her constant motto. Don't make a thing out of it and it will settle down. It has been revealed that, despite receiving a cancer diagnosis recently, King Charles still hopes to travel to Australia in October with Queen Camilla. Furthermore, Prince Harry will reflect on how special Canada is to him and wife Meghan at the Invictus Games launch tomorrow. When he opens the Invictus Games in Vancouver tomorrow, Prince Harry and his wife Meghan are expected to speak about how special Canada is to them. When the couple attends Vancouver Whistler 2025's One Year to Go celebrations later this week, Harry is expected to share with the crowds his fond memories of their time spent in the nation, according to The Telegraph. After resigning from their royal duties in 2019, Harry and Meghan are reported to have enjoyed their stay on Vancouver Island. In past speeches, the Duke expressed that he felt at home in Canada and that, we could imagine spending the rest of our lives there. Meghan reportedly has a strong affinity for Canada because she lived there while filming Suits. In his memoir Spare, Harry also mentioned how Vancouver gave him a taste of freedom. 
which encouraged them to take a longer-term break from the spotlight. What if life could be like that? All the time, he wrote. What if we could work for the Queen while spending at least a portion of each year far away? And out of the press's grasp, UV suggested that Canada might hold the solution, provided we could locate a location that the media was unaware of.